Well, thanks for joining me on the second part of the ArcBird 2.0 Autopilot slash OSD video. In the first part, we talked about all the hardware connections, as I made them clear to you. The connections around the back and around the front, which are heading at the moment, where what should go and how you should connect your camera, your airspeed sensor, your video transmitter, your RC transmitter, and your two and three position switch. You want more details on the two and three position switch, please go back to the first video where I have tried to explain it as best as I can. Later on, I'll also be showing you a little diagram of how it should work. But for the time being, if you have set up your ArcBird system just the way it should be set up through hardware, now you should be coming up to a part which is interface. That's where you go inside the system and do some settings to your choice. And believe me, there are settings. You cannot just install it and throw it up in the air. You have to do some settings. So there is a little bit of work involved, but it's not a lot. More about just tweaking certain settings to your own choice. Which brings me to number one. And this is before we've even started any of this thing. On your radio, leave the mix blank. Let me explain. This is a flying wing, which means an Elevon mix but in my radio, I have kept it absolutely blank. The mix is inhibited, it's not active. You activate the mix from your ArcBird system, and your ArcBird system would be able to do an Elevon, a V-tail, a bimotor, a traditional uh, plane, and all kinds of different servo, uh, sorry, flap and aileron setups as well. So remember, if you're flying an Elevon mix, a wing like myself, do not turn on Elevon in your radio, Turn it on from ArcBird. Just as an example, here is my Futaba radio. And if I go into the mix menu, which I'm here right now, and I go into Elevon, press enter. As you can see, Elevon is inhabited. Yet, I fly with it every single day. That's because the Elevon setting is active inside the ArcBird. Now, there's two reasons for that. You could probably activate it and still fly, but there will be clashes between the system and your radio. That's the first thing. So it's important not to do so. And the second thing is when you're working on the menu, your directions will be completely th thrown away. There will be left will be right, right will be left, up will be down, so on and so forth. So you won't be able to work on the menu. So leave the mix blank, right? And that brings me to the second part, the second note before we go into it, and that is satellite. When you turn on your system, and obviously you're going to be doing this indoor because you want to sit down and work on the settings in detail, there's a good chance you won't have any satellites. That means the ArcBird will be sitting there and looking for satellites for as long as 15 to 20 minutes. It can take a very long time because indoors you cannot catch satellites. So when you turn on your system, what you do is you take your radio and you move this button left to right and up and down a few times. I don't know the exact combination, but it usually works for me moving it left to right and up and down, and it will cancel the search for satellites and take you into the menu. Now this menu will have no satellites, the RTH function or anything will, it won't be, it will be inactive, but you'll be able to work on your settings. And that's important to remember, that's the second point. So now, after these two points, let's go straight into the menu, and I will show you how to work this thing out. So here I am now making the connection to the ArcBird system. And as you can see, it has started and it's looking for satellites. And as I mentioned to you before, if I were to put my radio in here and move the stick a few times left and right, up and down, Uh, do apologize that by the way was my throttle stick being being slightly up which it was right now Do apologize a little problem with the throttle the throttle stick on the radio was up and that's because of the lanyard and that made the noises from the ESC anyway, it's cancelled and Now we're into the main system now. I've put a little piece of tape on the camera Just to show everything much more clearly so I will now focus onto the screen and we will go into the menu. But before I do this, let me tell you how to go into the menu. So first things first, you have to be in manual mode. That M-A-N written on the top, right next to the signal and the flashing satellite. When you are in M-A-N or manual, 
it's important that you have to be in manual because it wouldn't go in menu in any other mode. Take your right aileron or your right stick basically, and this radio is mode two by the way. I'm sure you figured that out by, by now. Keep this to the right, keep it here, keep it here. There you go. You'll hear a little servo twitch and you will be in the menu. Now, that's fairly, fairly simple. Now you are inside the menu and I'm going to move my camera just a little bit closer to this to show you how it works with the menu. Just, just a rough idea. If you can see with the stick here, you move it down. This little star starts moving down all the way. Up obviously is up. And if you want to go into a menu, you will go right and it will take you into the menu. And if you want to change something, you will go right again and then change with up and down. Like for example, the roll control, I went into it. I can change it up or down. I don't want to change at the moment. To get back, you go back left. To get back again, you go back left. And to completely get out of the menu, you go with your two position switch and that's it. You're back out again. Right, so now I'm going to focus on the screen properly and we're going to go through the menu one by one, hopefully, and try to do it in as much detail as we can.